Hey everybody, welcome back. In this tutorial section, we're going to be covering denoise in our data using Data2. In the previous tutorial section, we covered importing our data into Chime2 using the Q2 Galaxy interface. You also just watched Bod's lecture about the theory behind denoising. A quick note before we get started. When you're working with your own data sets in the future, you need to be sure to remove all non-biological sequences from your data, particularly primer sequences. This is because Data2 can end up interpreting these primer sequences as a chimeric data and will end up removing any reads found with those in it from your data set. If you're unsure if your data contains primer sequences, you should review your protocols or contact your sequencing center for more information. All right, what are we gonna be doing in this tutorial? We're going to start by examining the visualization that we produced at the end of the last tutorial section to determine our trim and truncation parameters that we will provide to Data2 Denoise Paired. The next thing we're going to do is actually to run Data2 Denoise Paired. We're using the Denoise Paired because we're using paired in sequence data. After our denoising run is complete, we'll examine the run statistics. Here we'll find information about how many reads were removed from each sample at various points in the denoising process. Finally, we'll generate some visualization summaries of both our output feature table and feature data. The feature table contains the, um, which ASVs were found in which sample and the quantity of those ASVs found in each sample. The feature data is an um, artifact that contains the sequences that are represented by each ASV. All right, let's get over to Galaxy and get started. Let's begin by examining the interactive quality plot found in the previously generated visualization. To open it, we'll come to the history in Galaxy, click on the label, come down to view at Chime 2 view. We'll click on this to open our visualization in a new tab. Once our visualization is open, we will come up to the top and click on interactive quality plot. Great, now we can see both our forward and reverse interactive quality plot. I am going to scroll down a little bit so that we can see both the quality plots and the parametric seven number summaries. Why do we go about truncating our data? Well, we want to make sure that we're eliminating any poor quality read information so that it is not removed by Data2 denoise. As long as we choose an appropriate place to truncate our data at, we'll retain much of the relevant information for our analysis while preventing Data2 denoise from removing too much of our data due to poor quality reads. The, or the um, cutoff that we've selected for this tutorial is to truncate the data when the 25th percentile at any position falls below a quality score of 30. You'll remember from the previous lecture videos that um, a quality score of 30 means that there is a 1 in 1,000 chance that that um, position has been incorrectly assigned. In our case, this appears to happen in this region right here. So I'm going to go above my uh, plot, click and hold the left mouse button, and draw a rectangle around this area to examine it more closely. We can see that all these reads over here have a quality score at the 25th percentile, which in this case falls at the bottom of our box of our box and whisker plot for a position. So we can see that all these are above 30. So we'll move on over to the area where it seems like they begin to fall below 30. At position 202, if we look down at our parametric 7 number summary, we can see that the 25th percentile has a quality score of 33. We'll move on over to the next position, or position 203. At position 203, the 25th percentile has a quality score of 30. So this is right at our cutoff. We can see that by moving over to 204, our quality score drops below 30. And so in my case, I would want to um, truncate my data here at position 204. This is an area where we can see, uh, or that we will see when we get to the reverse reads, that um, there's some variation here due to the subsampling that was performed on our data set. Okay, let's move on over to the reverse reads. As with the forward reads, we want to select the region that appears to show the 
25th percentile dropping below a quality score of 30. We'll go ahead and draw a rectangle around the region. And if I didn't zoom in far enough, I can actually just go ahead and draw a new region that I would like to examine more closely. Starting at position 200 here, we can see that the 25th percentile has a quality score of 33. Then at 201, it drops to 30 and then remains at a value of 30 until we reach position 204, where it drops down to 29. This is where I would choose to truncate my data if I was simply looking at my visualization. In the tutorial, it discusses how the 25th percentile quality score drops below 30 at a position of 205. Mine happens slightly earlier due to the random subsampling of the total data set that has occurred to produce my particular visualization. Either position 204 or 205 would be a good place to trim at. Moving forward, I will choose to use the values provided in the tutorial. The tutorial also discusses a lower quality score um, present in the first position of the reverse reads. Let's turn our attention to that now. To zoom out, we we'll want to make sure that we're not hovering over one of the plots um, or one of the box and whisker plots and then double clicking to zoom back out. Then we can draw a new box over the beginning of our reads. In my visualization, we can see that the first position has the same quality scores as subsequent positions. And so in my case, if I was looking simply at my visualization, I would not choose to trim, um, to trim the reverse reads on the front end. However, moving forward, I will use the values provided in this tutorial. Because our data is stored as paired in sequences, we'll want to use the denoise paired tool. To do that, let's come over to the toolbar on the left hand side of the Galaxy interface. We'll come down to Chime 2, Data 2. Click on it to open all of the tools listed inside and then click on Chime 2, Data 2, Denoise Paired. Now that we have our Data 2, Denoise Paired interface open, we would like to select the correct data set. In this case is our dmultiplexsequences.qca that was imported in the previous section. This data has no primers attached to it, so we do not need to worry about removing those. Let's set, set the uh, forward reads truncation to 204. We'll come down and we'll truncate um, our reverse reads at 205. And then finally, we'll want to set the um, trim left R, or trim of the reverse reads, at 1. Before moving on, let's discuss the difference between truncation and trimming. The difference between truncation and trimming is that truncation occurs at the 3' prime end of our sequence, that is, towards the end of the sequence. The trimming occurs at the 5 prime, or beginning, of our sequence. Now that we've set our truncation and trim values and selected a data set, we'll come all the way to the bottom and click on Execute. At this point, we'll pause the video and I'll meet you back here when our run is complete. Alright, if we look over here, our three objects have turned green, so we know that our denoise pair tool has finished running. Now, before we move on, let's go ahead and rename each of these so that they're easily identifiable later. Number 86 on uh, my run is the feature table. This feature table contains um, the ASVs that are found in each sample and also the quantity of each ASV that is found in each sample. I'm going to go ahead and rename it to feature table 0 QZA. And after we've entered that in, we want to make sure to come up to the top and click save. Alright, our next artifact 
is a feature data that contains the sequences that make up each of the ASVs. So we're going to edit it by clicking on the little pencil, come up to the name here, and we're going to rename it ASV sequences-0. And now that we're done with that, come up to the top and click Save. Finally, our last artifact contains some stats about the denoising run itself. Let's go ahead and click the pencil to edit it. And we're going to rename it data2-stats.qza. All right, now that we've finished renaming it, let's click Save to be able to take a look at our denoising run stats. We need to produce a visualization. We will use the metadata tabulate tool to do this. Let's go over to the toolbar, scroll down to Chime 2 metadata, click on it to open the toolbox and select metadata tabulate. Now that we have the dialog open, we'll come up and for the input we want to select metadata from artifact because we're going to use our data to stats QZA. Then in the drop down under metadata source we'll make sure that our data to dash stats dot QZA is selected. We do not need to change any other options so we can come down and click Execute. We'll pause the video while this is running and come back and rename it when we're done. Now that Chime 2 has finished generating our denoising stats visualization, we can rename it by clicking on the pencil, clearing the name field, and entering in our new name. In this case, I'm going to call it data to stats sum visualization. And then we'll click save. Now let's click on the label and come down to Chime 2 view and click on it to open it in a new tab. In a run stats visualization, each row represents a single sample, and then the numbers to the right are numbers of reads or a percentage of reads. This input number is the same as the um, number of reads found for this sample in the demultiplexed sequences visualization. So this is our starting number of reads. This is the number left after passing through the filtering step of data 2 as well as the percentage that were kept. Next we have the number of reads kept after the denoising portion of the data 2 tool as well as the number kept after merging which is only performed with paired end reads. We also have the percentage kept there. And then finally we have the number that we're determined to be non-chimeric. Remember that a chimera is an artifact produced during PCR where two different reads are combined together. In this visualization we can sort on any column that we choose. If we wanted to see the sample with the lowest percentage passing the filtering step, we can come up to the label for that column and click these arrows. That will sort the column in either descending or ascending order. In this case, we can see that the lowest amount passing the filtering step occurred in sample FMT.0107B. In this data set, 
we had no sample where a large portion of the reads were removed either during the filtering, the denoising, the merging, or chimera removal steps. This may not always be the case. It is okay to have some samples where a large portion of the reads are removed. You just don't want every sample to have a large portion of the reads removed. Otherwise, it indicates there may be a problem with your data set. To see an example where we do have some samples that have had a large portion of the reads removed, you may want to check out the PD Mouse tutorial. I think that about covers it for taking a look at this visualization. Let's head back to Galaxy and take a look at some of our other data. All right. Let's take a look at our other two artifacts. These are the feature table and our feature data that contains our ASV sequences. You may notice that I have brought in the sample metadata.tsv. This is the same sample metadata.tsv that Liz showed you how to import in the previous tutorial section. The two artifacts that we're going to examine now will prove extremely important for further microbiome analyses. Let's start by taking a look at our feature table. To do this, we'll want to produce a summary visualization. We'll come over to the tools, scroll down to Chime 2 feature table, click on it to open the toolbox, scroll down, and click on feature table summarize to open it in the uh, center of the Galaxy interface. In my case, it has selected the correct artifact, but if yours does not have the correct one selected, you can click the drop down and click on feature table 0.qza. We also want to spe specify our metadata uh, table. To do that, we'll click where it says click here for additional options. We'll click insert sample metadata. We want it to insert it from metadata from TSV. And then in my case, again, it is Galaxy has selected the correct metadata file. Again, if not, you can click the drop down and select the correct file. Once we have our feature table and our metadata selected, we can click execute. While this runs, we'll pause the video and join you when it's finished. Now that our visualization has turned green and is done running, let's go ahead and rename it to help keep track of everything that's going on. In this case, I want to call it feature table zero summary, and it's a visualization, so we'll append .qzv. Finally, I'll click save, and our visualization has been completed. We're not going to take a look at it right now, and instead we will move on to our ASV sequences. The final artifact produced by the denoising step is our ASV sequences 0.qza. We'll remember that this artifact contains the actual sequences that are defined for each ASV. We want to go ahead and produce a visualization for it as well. To do that, we'll use the feature table. Uh, tabulate seeks tool. We'll come over to the tools, scroll down to Chime 2 feature table, click on feature table, and then scroll through the tools to find um, tabulate seeks, which should be near the bottom. Once we're here, we'll click on tabulate seeks to open up the dialog in the center of the Galaxy interface. We'll want to make sure to select our ASV sequences 0.qza. Remember, your number may be somewhat different than mine. Once we have it selected, there are no other options to pick, so we'll click Execute. We'll pause the video while this runs, and I'll meet you back here when it's done. All right. It looks like it's turned green and our um, ASV sequences visualization is complete. We want to go ahead and rename it for easier use in the future and we're going to call it ASV sequences dash zero dash sum dot QZV. 
All right, that finishes our preparation of our ASV sequences summary visualization. Like with our feature table summary visualization, we will not be taking a closer look at it now. This will be covered in future tutorial videos. This also finishes the upstream portion of our tutorial. That is, the portion of the tutorial concerned with importing and preparing data for further microbiome analyses. Moving forward, we will be providing artifacts that contain the full data set rather than the limited data set that we have used here. While not required, it would be a good idea before the next session to compare the upstream data set and the downstream data set. You can find download links for visualizations of both of them in the tutorial text. I hope that this has given you a good insight on how we go about denoising our data to prepare it for microbiome analysis downstream in CHIME 2.